All right, we are at section, uh, well, we're in chapter 16. We're gonna start with section uh, 16.1. Let's share the uh, PowerPoint. And there we go. Uh, this is a, there's a little story here about uh, Quincy Quarry's reservation. It's about a young fellow uh, hearing an echo uh, using his GPS to, to calculate his, the speed of sound um, in air. And we're actually going to do that in our experiment when we come to the, uh, um, our next experiment, the air column resonance. Part of it is uh, measuring the speed of sound um, in air. Uh, but that's actually a, the next chapter. Anyway, let's uh, move on. Uh, you, you can see here that as the pulse moves along the string, new elements of the string are displaced from their equilibrium position. So if you if you snap this uh, string, uh, you you put a wave pulse on the uh, on the string, and the string will will uh, travel down the the uh, travel down the length of it. Now the motion of the string is just up and down. In other words, no particles are actually moving down. It's just the wave itself is propagating down the length of the string uh, and the uh, uh, the actual string parts are moving up and down vertically. Uh, the direction of the displacement of any element at point P on the string is perpendicular to the direction of the uh, the direction of the propagation. Uh, the direction of the propagation is is the red arrow, the black arrow is the displacement of the element P. Um, you can see that P uh, is at the same location in all three of these uh, position graphs. All right. Um, as the pulse moves along the string, new elements of the string are displaced from the equilibrium position. Now let's look at it. Let's, uh, so that is a transverse wave. Now we're going to look at a longitudinal wave. Uh, the hand moves forward and back to create a longitudinal pulse. As the pulse passes by, the displacement of the coils is parallel to the direction of the propagation. So now we know that the, in a transverse wave, the uh, displacement is perpendicular to the wave motion. And in the longitudinal wave, the uh, displacement is parallel, is in the same direction as the propagation. Okay, combination of transverse and longitudinal displacements. This is, would be like a waves on a water. The elements at the surface move in nearly circular paths. Each element is displaced both horizontally and vertically from its uh, equilibrium position. I can remember seeing this on the Bob Hall Pier way back when the Bob Hall Pier was much longer before parts of it got wiped out by a hurricane and just sitting and watching. I mean, there was probably some kind of cup or something in the water, some trash that shouldn't have been there, but I was watching it anyway. And you could see the waves pass, and you you could see that the whatever it was was just was just bobbing up and down and making a slow uh, slow progress towards the beach. But notice that it was just bobbing up and down. So here's a uh, the uh, wave from a crest to to a trough back to a crest. It, uh, you know, the velocity of propagation is in that direction. And, but the same thing, I mean, the, 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 the water itself is not moving much. It's the wave that's, that's moving. Uh, don't, don't, if you look at this black particle, don't think that's a particle that's moving, uh, moving into a, uh, moving with the, uh, the velocity of propagation. The wave is moving in the velocity of propagation, but the individual water molecules are pretty much just staying in their same position. Yes, yeah, some of them will uh, eventually make it forward. Okay, now we talk about earthquakes, and the, we've already talked about uh, longitudinal waves and transverse waves. And there are two types of seismic waves, the longitudinal P wave. Um, it's called P because it's primary, it's the one that got gets there first so that when a, uh, a fault slips, it generates a longitudinal wave. It, uh, oh, I got to catch up on my notes. I think it, they say it travels at about uh, seven to eight kilometers per hour. Yeah, seven to eight kilometers per hour is called the P wave. 
And then there's the secondary wave, that's the transverse wave. So the longitudinal wave is going in this direction, it's much faster. The transverse wave is, is the vertical uh, movement and it's called the S wave because it's secondary. So you have primary wave, which is longitudinal and the transverse, the secondary wave, which is transverse. And it's, its speed is about four to five kilometers per second. Uh, so the longitudinal is seven to eight, transverse is uh, four to five. And by recording when these different uh, wave fronts arrive, they can, they can kind of uh, estimate where the epicenter originated from. Uh, okay, let's look uh, at two quick quiz questions. If a long line of people is waiting to buy tickets, the first person leaves and a pulse of motion occurs as people step forward to fill the gap. As each person steps forward, the gap moves through the line. The propagation of this gap is transverse or longitudinal. Uh, well, are the people going up and down? No, they're just going forward, so it's a longitudinal wave. You see the same thing if, if you're in traffic, stop at a light. As soon as the light turns green, not every car starts moving. There's a, a little bit of uh, motion at the first car, then the second car follows. So they, that would be kind of like a longitudinal wave. Um, all right, consider the wave at a baseball game. People stand up and raise their arms as the pulse arrives at their location. And the resultant pulse moves around the stadium. This pulse is transverse or longitudinal? Well, everybody's staying in their same seat. They're not, they're not, uh, being moved one way or the other, so it's a it's a transverse wave. They're only going up and down, uh, so it's a transverse wave. Now, wave functions and waveforms. Let's look at the uh, what the graph says. At t equals zero, the shape of the pulse is given by y equals f of x. And at some later time t, the shape of the pulse remains unchanged in the vertical position of an element of the medium at any point P is given by Y equals F of X minus VT. Um, so uh, we have the Y position is the height of the uh, wave pulse and uh, X is just where it is, uh, where the wave pulse is occurring or it's actually the position of the, uh, the rope or cord or whatever, it's, it looks like it's a cord. Um, and so the, uh, the position of P is given by Y equals F of X minus VT, the velocity times time, the velocity of the wave, uh, times times. Uh, so let's, uh, um, Y of X is equal to V minus, um, Y of, um, okay, the height of x of t is equal to the y of x minus vt at zero. And then they're just the same as it was at zero. So y x of t is equal to f x of minus vt. And, and then that's for if it's going in the positive direction. If it's going in the negative direction, y x of t is equal to f of x plus vt. Uh, so there, that's the end of this. Um, section we'll we'll pick it up uh, we'll pick up the next section uh, uh, um, on the next video 16.1 sinusoidal uh, sinusoidal waves I think it's actually called something else but that's okay